So while Alan's sorting out that, here's 10 YouTube tools and analytics you should be paying attention to in 2021. <laughs> YouTube Shorts, if you haven't heard of them yet, you will do in 2021. Short vertical video clips designed to satisfy a TikTok audience. Well, YouTube is doing them now too, and they are creating tremendous new opportunities for creators. This channel, for example, gained a million subscribers and half a billion views in just three months by making 3D animated Among Us clips. Anyway, if you decide to make some YouTube Shorts, you want to know how to track their success, and you can do so through the analytics in the YouTube Studio. First of all, in the YouTube Studio, go to the Analytics page and click See More. On this page, from the filters at the top, click Traffic Sources, You'll then be able to see how many views your channel is getting from those short video clips if you decide to make any, of course. If you want to track an individual video, go to the content screen in the YouTube studio to list your videos and click on the analytics icon for the video you want to check out. From this screen, you'll see a real-time box that shows you how many views that particular video is getting from traffic sources such as shorts over the last 60 minutes or 48 hour period. Now, if you wanna learn more about YouTube Shorts themselves, I'm gonna put my faith in Alan in linking up all of his videos on the topic in this card over here. In the meantime, I've got two more things I want to show you on the topic of YouTube Shorts. All right then, so if you follow these arrows from the customization tab down the left-hand navigation bar on the YouTube Studio, to the layout tab at the top of the screen, to the add section, to the Shorts videos, all of these arrows should allow you to add a new shelf to your channel page that helps you to confirm your videos are classed as YouTube Shorts and a convenient place for your viewers to watch all of your shorts all at once. Do note that this only appears in the mobile app of YouTube, not on your desktop YouTube channel page. And as an extra bonus, if you have vidIQ installed, on our real-time stats bar, we now show you how many views you are gaining specifically from YouTube Shorts. Simply check the Shorts data graph to add it to your stats bar. And no need to worry, by the way, this tool is completely free. Link in the description if you fancy having it. Next up on the main analytics page, you can scroll down to see a quick comparison of the average views from the first seven days on your last 10 videos, live streams, and premieres. Obviously, over time, you want these numbers to increase, and you can do some quick analysis via the latest videos box to the right. Keep an eye on things such as click-through rate, average view duration, and concurrent viewers for live streams. Anything with solid green up arrows, look to replicate that in future content. In the engagement section of analytics, check under the graph to go into detail about how your audience watches your content. The first 30 seconds of a video are crucial in retaining viewers for the duration of the whole video. So you can check here to see what's working and what isn't. There are also filters for continuous segments where viewers remain riveted to your content and dips where viewers abandon your content. Studying your videos at this microscopic level helps to improve average view duration in your future content. If you have access to the community tab, you should definitely be using it as it's a great way to stay in touch with your audience when you're not posting videos. Recently, YouTube added new analytics about community posts to the content screen in the YouTube Studio. What's useful about this page is that you can sort by the columns. So if I sort by likes, I know that voting polls are our most popular types of community posts, and then we can sort by votes to see which one of these voting polls creates the most buzz in our community. If you live stream on YouTube, you'll most certainly want to start pinning comments in the live chat. You should be able to do this by clicking the three dots next to a comment. Having a persistent message at the top of the live chat is a super powerful place for calls to action. As an example, during our weekly webinar, we set up a call to action for a free trial in the live chat. It's much better than having it buried in the video description, and it increased signups by 500% for that webinar. Speaking of live streams, this tool in the audience tab of the YouTube analytics may help you decide when to go live. It shows you when your viewers are on YouTube. It seems pretty clear to us that our audience is online in the morning, so we should post our content at those times, especially live streams. Secondly, this panel to the right shows you what other types of videos your audience are watching from other creators. This is a fantastic way to generate ideas for content since you know your audience is watching these types of videos, and you can add your own voice to the conversations going on in your video topics on YouTube. 
And just as another little vidIQ extra, when you watch a video, we've added the thumbnail image to the video scorecard so that you can see if the thumbnail of a video delivered its promise. And if you want to see the thumbnail in all of its glory, mouse over it, click on it, and that will open up a new tab with the thumbnail image. And all of this is courtesy of vidIQ for free.